You are the kind of people that should not come to Asia. Oh, great. Hey, what's up everybody? It's spring in Korea. I was expecting to shoot a beautiful vlog with the cherry blossoms out here in the countryside. And my bike breaks down and these cars won't stop coming to f up my audio. So I thought I would talk about the people who should actually not be coming out to Asia. And those are people with expectations. Ah, shh. So the chain came off and for me to actually get it off I need it relatively on some kind of a flat surface so I try to push it over there and now the chain is completely stuck and it won't go backwards or forwards so I gotta literally carry that whole scooter with me over there to attempt it. So oh my god guys, good Samaritan. Oh. <laughs> So actually I found that he's a YouTuber too and he camps on his bicycle which is crazy. He's so strong. Oh no no no. Oh uh, he doesn't have he just started so give him a like. He literally carried most of this. You guys saw it right? So hopefully I can meet up with him and then we could camp more. But I'll try to throw the description down below. So in Asia, unexpected things happen and sometimes bad shit happens. But most of the times, unexpectedly good things happen and we show you those moments in our YouTube videos. But showing you all those unexpected moments of goodness has people confused that they're only going to get good things out of here. And then they also assume other things that they're not going to get out of coming to Asia. And that's what I want to explain to you guys. Everybody out here in this neighborhood is out to try to help me. Uh, the old man let me borrow this hoe or something. And it's not working. So he's trying to get me a spanner, which then I could really use to widen this up and fix it myself. Uh, oh, oh, no, sir, no, sir. Oh, Alright guys, my hands are super dirty right now. So I'm gonna have to just wrap up here and head to the motorcycle place to get this realigned. And I'll talk to you more about expectations. Literally nothing is going according to plan today. Ah. 
Well, since nothing went according to plan, let's get to the only part I actually planned out. So, I keep getting the question, when are you gonna go back to Thailand? The channel is doing better when you're in Thailand. Although I keep telling you guys, you guys just don't get it. So, I had to go through some lengths to think of this chart to explain what I mean by living life out here in Asia and expectation. So this chart demonstrates the expected validation you'll receive from life or what I also like to call the ego scale. And this is a measurement of time or time is also money and age scale. So in America, everywhere else, as time goes by, you expect to gain more validation feeding your ego. Unfortunately, this is not how life works. In the very beginning, you're down here in the dirt. And as soon as you go to college, you get a job, you can like start paying for stuff. Then you get a like incremental boost. Actually, maybe it meets your expectation at that time. But as the debt piles up, girlfriends dump you, your validation and ego drops. And this is what they call the quarter life crisis, as the hipsters say. Oh shit, I can't even spell. If you stay in America, you'll probably keep going on like this until your kids move out. You can start affording nicer toys. You maybe get a nice little bump there if you don't die by this age but after that it's all downhill as you age that is of course unless you are part of the top one percent in which case your ego and validation will shoot through the roof because you're an sns influencer because you are elon musk whatever but you look up to those guys and you think you can be part of this and you think this ego validation time scale will work in your favor. But those of you guys who have seen the light then decide, hey, maybe if I go to Asia, I could be like Ethan. And instead of going on this downhill spiral, my money in Asia is so much that I could be part of the 0.01% there. And guess what? This is gonna be my life. And it's these people, these people with these expectations that annoy the crap out of me because I never say that this is what you should expect. None of my videos are about ego, expectation, or validation. Ugh. All right, guys, sorry about this. I'm not trying to be like a YouTube vlogger kind of transition thing right now. It's just that the sound is so bad. But anyways, those are the kinds of people that annoy me. Not only because they're just plain wrong, but because they keep asking me stupid questions that I'm sick of answering. And I have to be somewhat of a troll about it. I get triggered. So today I'm going to release my triggeredness because it is as beautiful as you can expect the day to be. And I will be less triggered today. But why are those people wrong? Well, let me explain in a graph again. So here again is our trusty validation ego time money graph. And then this will be the person's time and money as they come to Thailand. In the beginning, they're going to be down here in the dumpsters. Their ego sucks. So they go to soy cowboy or soapy massage or whatever. And their ego just shoots through the roof. They get a lot of validation. Because, I don't know, a lot of people associate sex with validation and ego. Anyways, they do that, they spend more money, and they could keep maintaining it. But eventually you're going to run out of money. So you drop down. So whenever you got money, you go up there again. Go back to cowboy, nah nah. And then it drops down. And they keep doing this. Now, some people might get lucky though. Or they're just draconian like me, and they actually try to find a legitimate girlfriend. Now, when that happens, 
your ego also shoots through the roof. But you know what? Cultural differences or whatever, relationships don't work out. It goes down. You find another one, it goes down. You find another one, it goes down. You keep repeating the cycle until you sort of realize at the end of the day, your ego and validation ain't gonna be that much higher here. As a matter of fact, sometimes it just keeps going down even more. As you realize you got visa issues, you got, you know, other issues, STDs, whatever. I don't know. But it, it tends to go down. So their ego and validation just goes down. Not only does their ego and validation go down, but their fun and adventure goes down as well, as well as their money. So it actually reverses it. So now I know what you guys are gonna be asking me. Well, your money doesn't always go back down. If I invest it into stocks, over time, time value of money, economics. Guys, I'm an economics major, so I know what they teach you. But never in the history of the world has any generation, except for the baby boomers, maybe, if it keeps going up, have they experienced such financial boom and stability. You're banking on something that is historically not always going to be true, you know? So, yes, maybe, maybe your money will keep growing. Maybe, you know, money just grows out of trees and we could keep printing it. But you always got to stay flexible is my motto. And that is why I don't believe in financial stability. Because financial stability never really exists except for the top 1% which most of you guys aren't. But now I'm gonna have some people, you know, point out, hey, what about that video why I left America? You portrayed this. Over time, you know, you're having the adventure of your life. Everything's great. You're saying everything is great. And that, you know, as a matter of fact, I'm actually saying things are getting better for me, for me. Although I don't expect this to happen to everybody. But yeah, things are getting great. But I do say it is a lot of work. Everyone's circumstances are unique. And even if you know it's the right decision, I'm fully aware how hard that decision is to quit on something you work so hard at. There are no guarantees that everything will work out, and you're going to have to earn everything out here, just like you do back home. And some people think that this is Bangkok, when in that video I clearly use videos of travel and adventure all over Asia. So this brings me to my second major reason for living and traveling out here in Asia and that is the ease of travel here. Because Bangkok is the main airport hub of Southeast Asia, for $60 to $120 round trip, I can go tomb raiding in the ruins of Angkor Wat in Cambodia, hotel in Singapore, breathe the fresh mountain air of Ella in Sri Lanka, explore the historical streets of Hong Kong full of history and character or experience the natural charm of the picturesque island of Jeju in Korea which by the way I'm dying to share with you in our future vlog but anyways aside from that point this does exist but it's not ego and validation this is the fun adventure scale and this is possible. And now this is where I'm going to have to make a clear differentiation between validation and ego and fun and adventure. I think those are completely different things. But I get it. I had a recent argument with somebody who believes that you live life for validation. That that is the point of living life. And I had the biggest argument with him because I completely do not believe in that philosophy. Because in my experience, Validation and ego, although it is great, yeah, I mean, who doesn't like validation? It doesn't equate fun and adventure all the time. As a matter of fact, it could be negative because it is so hard to gain validation and to feed your ego. And it's counterproductive because people don't like self-serving, high ego people. So you tend to get less validation and ego the more you seek it. And that is particularly true in Asia because no one really gives a crap about you. <laughs> Everybody cares about themselves. And they only want to be around people who want to have fun. So it's actually counterproductive to be having expectations of serving your ego and that you'll gain more validation. You'll gain a higher status if you spend more money and time here. Because 
that isn't the case. The more time and money with the expectation of validation you spend here or anywhere in the world, the less you'll get. Unless, of course, you are the top 1% and you got more money than God and you can just like change people's lives. I mean, if you do, more power to you. Yes, you will gain validation that way. But that's because you're serving other people. But let me tell you why me without any money, without any financial security, I keep having more and more fun. And that's, this was my expectation. I expected the validation I'll receive and my ego to diminish over time. And I was able to do this because when I was in America, I was at such a low point in my life. This is actually misleading. Just expect a huger graph up here. I was so low. I was so depressed. My ego was so shot that I'm like, how much worse could it get? I'll go to Asia. I'll have a little fun, you know, right here. Maybe I'll get a little bleep. But, you know, after a while, I'll run out of money maybe and I'll be a Walmart greeter. And this is the reason I'm having so much fun and adventure out here. If I had to define it in a mathematical way, I believe that fun, happiness, is adversely related to expectation. Contentment, which is fulfillment in life, enjoyment, happiness, is a measure of how much you're receiving in relation to how much you're expecting. Simply put, the more you expect, the bigger your disappointment is, so the more unhappier you are. And the less you expect, the higher everything is exceeding your expectations, and the more enjoyable things become. And as you can see, although there are very unexpected incidents happening throughout this day today, I'm still having a relatively fun time because I've just become so good at really expecting nothing. And out of no expectation, I'm receiving kindness. I mean, I, I, you guys know I didn't plan this video to be like this, right? This is just how it happens. I expect nothing and things happen. And say it is the energy of the world or whatever. Long story short, because, you know, people tell me they want my videos 10 minutes to 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. And I'm trying to serve your expectations because it is a world of expectations still. I recommend that you do not have too many expectations when you come out here. It gets really annoying. And I guess I'm now turning Asian in the sense that I hate people with so much expectations that want me to serve their egos. You know, it gets really annoying and frustrating. I just want to be around people who just want to have fun right now. And their expectation is nothing more than what happens today, next week, maximum one month, because everything is unexpected. None of y'all out there could have predicted that COVID was going to happen five years ago when you were watching my video and planning your financial stability, you know, how you can um, forever have a sustainable, you know, life out here in Asia kind of crap that I never said or taught or whatever, but you're listening to other YouTubers about. And none of y'all can predict what's going to happen in another two, three years. We could be in World War III. So the only thing you can expect is what you do with your life today. How much fun you can have right now. Forget the validation, forget the ego, because the fun and adventure is what matters. And although I can't guarantee you'll get a lot of validation and ego, it is my experience that when you focus on fun and adventure, the validation naturally follows. And because you didn't expect it, you're far more grateful for it. You know, the other day, I unexpectedly received a huge donation from Jeffrey. Jeffrey, by the way, has been donating to this channel a lot. I mean, he expects nothing. $100 here and there, PayPaling me, and he was my Patreon, etc. So I'm gonna give him a shout out because it is truly because of you guys that have no expectations of me whatsoever, but just wholeheartedly support this channel that I'm able to continue to vlog and try to bring you guys high quality videos. Thank you so much. And if you watched it to this point, thank you so much for being a supporter of this channel. I hope you liked this video. And I also wanna give a big shout out to George Yamamoto as well, because he's the guy that recommended that I use this 
Black Mist Filter. He's the only cinematographer that I actually listen to. Let me know if you notice the difference. Give a shout out to Georgie Yamamoto below. Thank you. Bye bye guys. Pssh.